I think I can cite the exact time that I became first interested in UFOs, and it was, I think, the 17th of July, 1954, when I saw my first UFO. Uh, people can read my written account of what we saw, but I was on the edge of the St. Louis airport. I was a lad of six and a half years of age at the time, seated in the right-hand seat of a 1953 Studebaker at a drive-in theater on the edge of the St. Louis airport. And I, my mother, my brother, who were all watching the, the movie at this theater, saw a very strange object. And I can say strange because everybody else in the theater saw it too. And they were getting out of their vehicles, standing seemingly mesmerized by this image before them. And I think it's not unreasonable to, for me to state that I became addicted to the UFO subject. It was at that point that I was committed to becoming the director of the National UFO Reporting Center. It looks to me, and it first became apparent to me from that sighting, that we are dealing with something that was not manufactured on this planet. The reason I'm the director of the National UFO Reporting Center today is because of that sighting in 1954. The reason I then became responsible for the center back in 1994 is I called a friend who had established the National UFO Reporting Center and I heard that he was considering shutting it down after his having operated it for about 20 years and I thought that would be a shame so I called him up and offered my assistance to maybe lighten his load that would serve to induce him to keep the facility running. I, recognized tremendous value to this operation. And I said to him, this is Bob Gribble, the founder of the hotline, I said, Bob, I, I think that's a job I would consider doing. He said, Peter, it's yours. Just like that. If I had known what I was going to, about to do to my personal life by accepting responsibility for this facility, I think I might have moved on. I might not have volunteered to do what I've done for 20 years. It is in many respects a thankless task, working day and night to provide people with a place to report one of these sightings. But what keeps me moving forward is those few people who seem grateful for having a facility like this. Of course, there are many others, the Mutual UFO Network does the same thing. There are many others I could cite who collect UFO reports, but I think by dint of hard work, the National UFO Reporting Center has become perhaps one of the more popular facilities for reporting UFO sightings. And when some peop somebody calls me up and is just flabbergasted by what he's seen and says, boy, am I grateful that there's somebody there who's willing to listen to me, that's the kind of gratification that a UFO investigator works for. The McMinimins UFO Festival has become almost like a reunion for me. I've been coming here for a decade or I think more than that even. And it is a unique gathering of people who are like-minded, who have a quest, who have an, an interest in the field of ufology, who feel they're not getting enough information from other sources. So they come here it's a wonderful community of people, very friendly. Uh, it's a very informal conference relative to many I've been to in the sense that the attendees feel free to approach the speakers and vice versa. I've met a lot of people here whom I consider to be friends now. And I, rec I may not remember their names from year to year, but I certainly remember their faces and enjoy crossing paths with them again at this conference. It's really a wonderful gathering of people who are interested in the UFO subject. The parade's a lot of fun. Some of the costumes here are just first class. People clearly have spent a lot of time getting their costumes ready for the big parade and the uh, Saturday night ball. I Believe it or not, I have yet to attend one of the Saturday night balls. I thought I was going to do it this time but uh, I got tied up and uh, was not able to get here. But uh, with regard to what an alien may look like, 
I would say that's a flip of a coin. Many people have addressed that issue. Academicians have addressed that issue. And I'm not sure we know, except for those few reports of people who claim to have been personal witness to these alien creatures. Uh, I'm a biologist by training and therefore understand a little bit about the chemistry of carbon in our galaxy, in our universe, in our environment. And carbon has a propensity for allowing the formation of many, many different types of molecules and different types of forms. I'd say the correct answer to the reasonable question, what the aliens look like, is they could look like anything. When I look at the diversity of light like uh, life, when I look at the diversity of life on our planet, anywhere from ferns to blue whales, hummingbirds to pterodactyls, I'm being facetious, there are no pterodactyls, although there have been, we think, uh, it points out to us, it underscores just how variable life forms can be. They can be anywhere from a virus to an elephant. And I would expect that same diversity of life as we venture out into the atmosphere, into the galaxy, that same diversity of life forms would be out there that we see here on the planet Earth. Why it would be any different, I don't know. And they would have simply adapted to their respective environment, uh, environmental conditions, to cold, gravity, uh, light, and so on. There are many many variables, of course, that give rise to what a life form would look like. So I think we can expect some pretty strange, strange looking life forms when we finally encounter them and get to know them. And I provide a place for people to contact if they believe that they may have been witness to a UFO. And we then invite them to follow up with a written report of their sighting detailing everything that happened. We proofread that report and then we post it to our website ufocenter.com and let people who would like to know what's really going on have access to, we hope, good, accurate information. That's what we do. When people call, I talk to them. I try to determine very quickly whether what they saw, what they're calling to report, could have been a UFO or whether it was clearly something else. There are many, many things that people report that are not UFOs. They report satellites, they report a crescent moon, they report strange aircraft, they report everything. And the job of a skilled UFO investigator is to get through all of that chaff, all of the material that doesn't pertain to a genuine UFO and get to the heart of the matter to determine, to separate those reports that may be genuine reports of authentic UFOs from those that are something else.